Today with our Raspberry Pi, we are gonna somehow light up this little LED light. The first thing you're gonna need to do is find the side of the Raspberry Pi and find this kind of oval shaped port. It is where we're gonna plug in off the side of the computer, our power cord over here, which has this nice little button off to the side. We are going to plug our power cord in like so, and we're gonna click on this switch and press it in and that's going to turn on the Raspberry Pi. If we pop the case off of it, we should notice that there are two lights inside here. If they are not, simply press the power switch again, and you should notice them to come on. You can see that it's powering up right now. This is the only cord we're gonna need for today, and it's essentially going to act as a power battery to operate our simple circuit to light up this little LED light. The other things that we're gonna need are two wires with a prong on one side and no prong on the other side. The side with no prong is gonna fit over these little pins over here called general purpose input output pins. This is able to slide onto one of these pins and it will stay in place. The other side with this little prong is gonna be able to fit into what we call a breadboard and this prong will fit into here. This breadboard is a great prototype for building circuits. It is solderless, so we don't need to melt this little metal prong onto it, and we can easily take it out whenever we need. Also, it will help keep our parts organized, whereas when we put this little LED light inside of it, if I flipped it upside down, it would not fall off. So again, this is a breadboard. It's great for prototyping. We're gonna need two of these cords, an LED light, Raspberry Pi, our power cord, and most importantly, we need this guy, which is called a resistor. This is gonna reduce the electricity so that our LED light bulb doesn't get too much electricity from our Raspberry Pi and it doesn't explode. So we're gonna use all these parts together. Let's show you how. The first thing we wanna do is make sure our Raspberry Pi is facing the right direction. When we take a look at our map, we notice that we have the two USB ports at the bottom and the ethernet port at the bottom. So we wanna make sure we align this so that we have these ports facing us so that when we're looking at these pins, we can tell that the top left pin is the top left pin of 3.3 volts of power. If we had this the wrong way, we might think that the top left pin over here was for power, but this is not this pin. This is actually the bottom right pin, which is not gonna be helpful. So let's make sure that we have this facing the right way. Now we're gonna take the side with no prong on one of our cords, and we're gonna plug it in the top left prong over here and this is gonna be 3.3 volts of power. Make sure you're on the top left one that matches with the map over here. On our breadboard, you'll notice we have A, B, C, D, E. These columns go up and down, and there's row one, two, three, four, five. These go left to right over here. We're gonna take this prong, and we can place it in any row. I'm just gonna start by placing it in A1 over here, which is the first row in the first column. So as of right now, this is not a closed circuit, but power is flowing from the outlet to the Raspberry Pi over to our temporary prototype breadboard circuits. Then we're gonna go ahead and take our resistor, so we lower the electricity before it reaches our LED light, and we're gonna place one end of this resistor right in the same row, row one, right next to this power. So as you can see, I had trouble getting it into 1B, so I put it over here in C. As long as it's in the same horizontal row, it will all be connected. Then you're gonna take the other side and you're gonna move it across the gap in the middle, and I'm gonna place it over here in 1F, the first row in the prong. Actually, we're gonna do G, it's all the same. And now I have my resistor, which is gonna carry the electricity from this all the way to the other side. And this is where we're gonna now put in our LED over here. Now, if we study this LED light, you'll notice one of the prongs is longer than the other. The longer side is the positive side, and that side needs to connect to the power, which is gonna come right after this resistor. So I'm gonna plug this long prong in to row number one in the same row over next to the resistor. So I'm gonna spread this out a little bit so it's able to fit and I'm gonna place it in. So I've placed the long side here in column I in row one, and you might be wondering, where do I put the short side? And the answer is anywhere that's in a different row. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in row number four, 
I could put it in row two, row three, row four, it wouldn't matter. But you can see that I have now placed that in row one and row four. This is the short side, the other is the long side. Finally, we are gonna take our wire and we are gonna finish this circuit. To do that, I can place this prong anywhere in this fourth row where this leg is. So for now, I'm just gonna put this in this row four, which is in column F, as you can see. And I need to attach the other side somewhere to the grounds. And we actually have a lot of ground ports on the Raspberry Pi. The easiest one to find might be down here at the bottom left, which is this port right here. So if I take this and I place this into our bottom left port, which is for the ground, making sure that we have it all wired properly, we get action. We can see our LED light has lit up and I didn't have to do any code. We just had to make sure that the circuit was fully connected. It's a closed circuit. Now, something that I recommend you trying, this cable again is plugged into the ground. I could also have plugged this instead of into this one, I could have looked at the fifth one down on the left side. So if I unconnect this and I go the fifth one down on the left side, which is one, two, three, four, five, it also connects. So it just has to be one of the many ground ports to connect the circuits. Another cool thing you should try is this doesn't actually have to be in this uh, column F. If I unplug this, I could plug it into any part of the same row four, even just touching the metal prong to the metal will connect to the circuit. So really anywhere in row four, it would work, it doesn't matter. Same thing over here. If I were to have unplugged this, and if I were to put it in row B instead of row A, that would work. If I were to put it in row E, that would work. Even if I just touched the resistor, it would work. So they just have to be in the same row. So I recommend that you guys give that a try to see it light up and turn off. And as promised, this does not just need to be in row one. I could unplug this and I could take this resistor and I could instead put this in a different row. So if I place this in row, for example, three, having changed nothing else, it looks a little weird, but as long as I put this back in to row three, it will still light up. And as a bonus challenge, see if you can get two light bulbs lit up at the same time. Hint, you will need another resistor, you will need another light bulb and two more wires. And there just so happens to be a 3.3 volt circuit over here that you connect to, and we have multiple other ground ports. Good luck and have fun with it, guys.